my friend Guy Mitchellmore, actually we're not really friends, but if we met in the pub and had a couple of pints, I'm sure we'd be BFFs. However, he is one of my favourite YouTubers. And if you like videos about music composition, I'm sure you already subscribe to his channel. He's a film and media composer and he also likes wildlife. So he shot this two minute video about the starlings flying around. There were, he reckons, around 500 or 600,000 of them. And then he put music to it and his video shows us his compositional process as he builds up the score. Now in the description, he is kind enough to give us not only the movie, but the stems from his composition, MIDI files, audio files, and an extended version of the video, which goes into even more detail about how he composed the piece. So I thought I'd take the film and see if I could produce a soundtrack for it as well. Now a download link for all this stuff is in the description in his video. I will leave a link to his video, of course, in the description. If you want to jump to my version of the movie, then it is at this point in the timeline. I thought you might find it interesting if I explain some of my thought processes as I approach the piece. Now there were a couple of things Guy said, which I found very interesting, uh, sufficiently so to warrant repeating here. The first is, as the film shows birds swirling around, there might be a temptation to produce swirling music. And Guy said this would be considered now quite old fashioned. Now I can totally see where he's coming from. This might be considered a form of Mickey Mousing, which is really, really old fashioned and old hat, and you probably wouldn't do it at all in any movie other than in a kid's animation. Uh, there are probably a few exceptions, but as a general rule, you don't want a Mickey Mouse. Now, as a viewer of the film, I have to say that personally, I would not have had a problem with swirling music to accompany the swirling birds. The other thing he said was that this could be scored in any number of different ways. However, it being about birds and wildlife, I think most people would probably think about doing something um, with an orchestral feel and orchestral bed. I trying to think of a couple of different things I could do, different to the version that he did. And I thought, could I use synthesizers, have a synthy sound? And it, to me, it just really wouldn't have worked. At least it's something which I couldn't do. Maybe you could do a synth soundtrack to that. So the other idea I toyed with, because this is about birds flying around, I wondered if I could turn it into a sort of horror theme. Uh, now, obviously with the birds there, I thought of Hitchcock's The Birds, which was scored by the amazing Bernard Herrmann. Now it's so long since I saw the movie, I can remember absolutely nothing about the score. But I thought if we could add the sound of flapping wings, some dark sounds, maybe a jump scare or two. I thought that might work, but in the end, I watched the movie several times to see what sort of vibe it gave off. And it really was a sort of wildlife soaring bird vibe that I got from it. So that's what I went with. Now I'll show you the sounds and the instruments that I used. I'm not gonna do a complete track breakdown. It's a pretty short piece, it's two minutes long, and you can hear where the different sections come in and out. However, I will mention one thing which you may find interesting. Given the vibe I got from the film, I wanted to put a sort of drony background underscore thing through the movie. And that's what I did. I'll show you how I did that and what I used in a second. But I also wanted to add a few short melodic elements, uh, riffs if you like, or motifs if you are more classically oriented. So I used a couple of sounds for that. There's a nobo, there's a soprano, and a strange but oddly satisfying orchestral sound. The first instrument to come in is the oboe, and I initially tried recording this to a click track, but I just couldn't get the time right. It didn't feel right. I didn't want to do it rigidly to a click track. So in the end, I just switched off the click. Everything in this piece has been recorded, uh, well, manually, I guess, by hand without a click track. The little phrases do have a sort of tempo of their own, but I don't think it would be particularly easy to uh, tempo map them. Not that I would want to. So let's have a look at the sounds and the instruments that I used. 
so this is the project you can see the different parts i don't normally color code them but i've done so because it looks a little bit more attractive so the first sound is the drone for this i've used the emulator and there's a super uh, patch here all the sounds are running in complete control so this is arturias and this patch sounds like this And I thought this was a, a super sound, it's sort of a droney sound, but it evolves. And I like this so much, I thought, right, I'm going to put this through the entire track, uh, which is what I did, as you can see there. So the next sound is this one. This is the Eric Whitaker, is that how we pronounce it? Whitaker Choir. And you can see it just comes in in a couple of places. Um, a little bit later on in the piece and I really just wanted a soprano voice just a sort of soaring soprano voice and it sounds like this And I actually struggled for ages uh, trying to find a suitable soprano voice. The first one I looked at was Native Instruments Choir Omnia. And even the single alto and soprano voices, they, they just sounded a bit too choir-ish, if that makes sense. Uh, so this one sounds pretty much the way I wanted it to sound. It's just sort of a soaring soprano voice, which has a, a couple of uh, phrases in the piece. So the next one, uh, this is Hive, UE's Hive. It's just this sort of bell-like sound. I think it plays four notes in the entire track. And this was just to give it a little bit of a a lift it, it doesn't do an awful lot if you blink you might not hear them but it does appear at the end to give us the final cadence next ah uh, this is the oboe i really really struggled with this one Now, I think that's a super oboe sound. Um, I was looking for an oboe, as you can see here, and I tried dozens of different oboe sounds from various instruments. Now, I have a lot of sample libraries, but as I find complete control easy to use, and it lets me sort through all the sounds and presets. So I was almost on the point of ditching complete control for this sound and looking at some of the other sample libraries I have, which are not NKS compatible, so do not run in complete control. This is Native Instruments Symphonic Woodwinds Solo. And the problem I had is that it didn't have any vibrato on it. But of course you can add vibrato. And uh, th there's another super patch here, which I almost used uh, called expressive and that produces a swell a really nice sound anyway i ended up with this sound and that's what i used and i think that works quite well so after the oboe plays a few notes i wanted to come in with some sort of um i guess a, a textural orchestral sound and after a little bit of searching i found this this is arcus another native instruments library and this is called burning orchestra and it sounds like this and this produces slightly different sounds depending on how you play it so if i play softly you sort of get this little uh, the bell effect and if i play a little bit harder
it's weird the way this works i don't exactly understand it but um you get an orchestral effect sometimes you get this bell coming in as well but if you hold down a chord there's the bell effect and the orchestral effect and just by playing in slightly different ways you can get a range of different sounds a different range of different orchestral effects and i just thought this was uh, super for birds and wildlife and nature and soaring sounds and things like that so that's what i used for uh this sort of orchestral piece which comes in after the oboe and there are two tracks they're both exactly the same sound and you could see that one of them uh plays on top of the other one the sort of two parts to this little section and uh, after it's been introduced it's in for most of the track it sort of drops out a little bit here when we have the uh, the vocals and the elbow plane and then it come back, comes back in to finish off the track so there are the instruments and the sounds I used and putting everything together this is the film and the music that i came up with it's two minutes long i will see you after the movie So that was my attempt at scoring this little film. I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. It was great fun and I would absolutely encourage you to have a go if you are interested in scoring the film. And if you do produce something then please do leave a link in the comment section. I'd be really interested to see how other composers tackle this and I'm sure other viewers would too. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting, hopefully a little bit inspirational. If you did enjoy it, then I think you might enjoy these videos as well. Check them out. As always, I really do appreciate you spending time watching my videos. So for that, thank you very much indeed. I will see you again in the next one.